فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا دا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم ويبصر ذرات لا ويبصر ذرات العوالم كلها ويسمع أصوات العباد ويشهد He sees the most minute things of all the worlds in entirety and hears the voices of his servants always a witness. So the author says, وَيُبْصِرُ This is now we're going to characteristics of affirmation. We're going into characteristics of affirmation. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, He sees. Allah is seeing subhanahu wa ta'ala is every kainat, every existing creation, He can see them subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of them. حتى the author says ذرات العوالم Allah sees الأمور الصغيرة الدقيقة Allah sees the minute small things that in which the human eye can't see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can see them all of that so then how can he not see what is greater if he can see the small minute things then why can't he see the great and big things that are happening that's why many people are saying, Akhi, I'm suffering. Your mat is big. Allah can see smaller than that. Allah is not heedless. Like Allah says in the Quran, فَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ اللَّهَ غَافِلًا عَمَّا يَعْمَلُ الظَّالِمُونَ Don't think to yourself, Allah is heedless of what Bashar Asad is doing to his people. The transgressors and the oppressives. The oppressors, what they are doing to their people, the tyrant leaders, what they are doing to their people, Allah is not heedless. He sees that, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But again, what did we say before? Allah's actions is what? With wisdom. Wisdom. Now, you may know the wisdom. Sometimes Allah may state why he does things. And sometimes the wisdom are not mentioned. Are you with me, brothers? And for us, my beloved brothers and sisters, for us to question Allah's actions means our. you can only question when you have the knowledge in which he has. Are you with me, brothers? You don't have the knowledge Allah has, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if He tells you things that are going to happen, you won't understand it because it hasn't happened yet. Are you with me, brothers? A kid cannot come to an academic discussion and understand what they're talking about. Allah wa ta'ala's dealings of this world and how He chose and why He has chosen to put you through this. Even if you were told about it, you may not be able to digest it. And he's lihikam. There's wisdom in why he does things, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't question him. Don't question him. His knowledge is beyond your comprehension. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah sees everything. And I said before, he sees dabibu namlati sawda ala sakhrati samma fi laylati dhalma. He can see all of that. The footprints of an ant. Ya ikhwa. He can see that subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of that he can see it. Also Allah wa ta'ala, the author says, وَيَسْمَعُوا Allah hears أَصْوَاتَ الْعِبَادِ He hears the sound and the voices of his creation. Allah says in the Quran, سَوَاءٌ مِنْكُمْ مَنْ أَسَرَّ الْقَوْلَ وَمَنْ جَهَرَ بِهِ It is to him equal. The one who screams and the one who whispers. Both of them he can hear subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one whose voice is low and the one who screams for him, Allah wa ta'ala is all the same. وَلِذَلْكَ عَيْشَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ عَنْهَا She said in the hadith al-Imam al-Bukhari uh, narrated that Aisha رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ عَنْهَا She said on the Sahih Muslim, a Muslim narrated in Sahih that Aisha said or I think it's in Bukhari She said, أَلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي وَسِعَ سَمْعُهُ الْأَصْوَاتِ Praise is to Allah, whose hearing has encompassed all of the sounds and the voices there are. لَقَدْ جَاءَتِ الْمُجَادَلَةِ The woman who was complaining and arguing, she came to the Prophet ﷺ and تَشْكُوا إِلَىٰ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ she, was, she came to the Messenger, complaining to him. وَإِنَّهُ لَيَخْفَ عَلَيَّ بَعْضُ كَلَامِهَا Some of her st- statements and her speeches, I couldn't hear. She was in the next room, Aisha. A woman came to the Prophet complaining about who? About her husband. 
Pay attention to this. Aisha said, I was there in the next room. Some of the speeches and the dialogue and the conversation that was going on through between who? Between the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, and the woman, she wasn't able to hear Aisha. Allah set down verses that are going to be recited that the Prophet said, sorry, that Allah said, قَدْ سَبِعَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّتِي تُجَادِلُكَ فِي زَوْجِهَا وَتَشْتَكِي إِلَى اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ يَسْمَعُ تَحَاوُرَكُمَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ سَمِيعٌ بَصِيرٌ Three times Allah mentioned the word Sama. Look what he said. قَدْ سَمِعَ Allah had. Uh, what was the concept of the word Qad if it goes before Fi'l Madi? It shows a tahqiq, right? It is the truth and it's a haqiqah that Allah had it. There's no doubt about it. Qawla allati tujadiluka, the one who is arguing you, with you, Muhammad, in the affairs of who? Fi zawjiha, in the matters of her husband. Wa tashtakir, she's complaining. Ilallahi to Allah. Wallahu yasma'u, Allah hears tahawrakuma, the dialogue and the conversation that took place between the two of you. That's the second sabah. The third in Allah Sami'un Basir. In the same ayah. Allah is the hearer and the seer of all things. So Allah hears everything. And as I said before in the verse in Surah Al-Ra'd, Sawa'un minkum man asarra al-qawla wa man jahara bihi. If you speak and you shout at the top of your lungs and you whisper, and you whisper, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, rather, Pay attention. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of that which you haven't said yet. That you're going to say, it's already, he's aware of that, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even that which you haven't uttered, that you said in your heart and your mind alone, he knows it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's called hadith al-nafsi, right? When the person whispers to themselves. In the beginning of Islam, the people were accounted for this. Sahih? They were judged and based on what? Their nafs, they speak to themselves, they were judged for it. And that's why the Sahabas, they can pray to Rasulullah today, something has come down that we're not able to. How can we control what we think? How can we control what we, what we think? So let alone the statements that come out of your mouth, Allah Ta'ala, wa ta'ala He knows what's in your heart. The, the speeches that are going in your heart, He knows it, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So this is why I say to my beloved brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fully aware of your problems. And since he is aware of it, the cure is only with the one who knows it better. Two things, brothers. If you come to a mufti or if you come to a doctor and you tell him your problems, he wouldn't know your situation, the ins and the outs. He wasn't there last night when you were suffering from the pain. And this minute that you're suffering from it. And everything. He doesn't know. So he might diagnose you incorrect. Because the perception of your problem may be deficient to him. It may not be complete. He may not see the bigger. You're just going to be here for 15, 20 minutes, half an hour. And then after that, he's going to, he's going to do this to you. He's going to move your hand. He's going to pull your this. Just to see how you're feeling. And then after he's going to prescribe you. He doesn't know what happened last night. How you're feeling. That may have changed his but Allah Taala knows everything. So the way Allah is going to solve your problem is greater than anything else. So that's why you have to have a very close bond with Him, Subhanahu Wa Taala. A bond that's just bigger than whenever you need Him, you just go running to Him. But the believer is known even at the times of good and the times of ease. He's in obedience to Him, Subhanahu Wa Taala. And Allah Taala rather. If everybody spoke at the same time, and everyone asked Allah for something, you can hear all of them at the same time. We all went to a mountain. We stood, the whole of the people in the entire world stood up and they all spoke to Allah one time. Everyone. It would not differ to him any sound from the other sound. Languages that the people are speaking will not be a problem for him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are you with me? The Prophet told us this. Ya ibadi, the Hadith al-Qudsi. Ya ibadi, law anna awwalakum. Let alone this creation that are alive today. Rather, if from the time Allah created creation until the day of judgment, the creation that are going to be created, if all of them were placed in front, 
and they all spoke. Not two of this would would become blurry to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And us, look at us. Are you with me? If we look at one person, can we look at another person? If we're listening to one person, can we listen to another person? Are you with me? Naqs, deficiency. Even the hearing that we have is very deficient. We're like, look, do you want me to can I, can I, you want me to listen to both of you? You can't. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look what the Prophet said. That Allah tabarakhu ta'ala said. يا عبادي لو أن أولكم وآخركم وإنسكم وجنكم قاموا في صعيد واحد فسألوني فأعطيت كل إنسان مسألته ما نقص ذلك مما عندي إلا كما ينقص المخيط إذا أدخل البحر Everybody went onto a mountain Everyone was somewhere open They asked Allah And Allah gave each one He's able to Because he can hear everyone If he gave everybody And this is from the time that the creation started Until the day of judgment All of them And he gave each and every one of them what they asked for What would happen? Would that, def- would that reduce from Allah wa Ta'ala's treasures? Just like a needle, if it was put into an ocean, the way it would have an effect. It, wouldn't, it would not reduce from the ocean. Also, then the author goes, وَيَشْهَدُ Allah is what? One who observes. وَيَشْهَدُ meaning he's observing, he's looking over. Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. And it's like the ayah in Surah Al-Fatih, وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ شَهِيدًا Enough is Allah for us, a witness. The one who is observing the matter. What is it that Allah observes? Allah observes every action and every speech that you come with. Nothing is hidden from Him. And it's sad because when we do a sin and we know Allah is looking over us, we still go forward and we do it. No respect. No honoring of Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We make Him ahwanun nadirina ilayna. We make him the lowest of the ones that look at us. But if you were, if you knew that uh, your mother was looking at you, or your dad was looking at you, or a wife, her husband was looking at him, they're looking at her, or the wife was looking at the husband, there were things that they, they would not do, that they hide. صح? There are things you wouldn't do in front of your family members, but you would do that in what private, and you would make Allah the lowest of those who look at you. Ma, even though Allah is the one who is what, is observing you, Subhanahu wa Taala. نعم. له الملك والحمد وله الملك والحمد المحيط بملكه وحكمته العظمى بها الخلق تشهد. To him belong all dominion and all praise. He encompasses his dominion and to his remarkable wisdom the creation testifies. Allah تبارك وتعالى he is the complete king he has mulk kingdom everything falls under that kingdom of his Allah says in the Quran the, the, he has the dominion of the samawat and he also has the ard everything they fall under there no one is outside the mulk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Walhamdu praises for him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wahikmatuhu Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala's wisdom al udma biha al khalku tashadu. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala the creation which he has created they testify that Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is hakimun fi khalqi. He is wise in his creating. And he's also wise in the way he runs affairs, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as I said before, Allah does not do anything except with a, with a wisdom. All of his actions, they come based on wisdoms. Allah doesn't do something because he just feels like wanting to do it. Are you with me? That's why Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, he refuted those who tried to put that concept forward. And he said to them, أَفَحَسِبْتُمْ Do you think أَنَّمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا do you think we just created you out of a joke? So that's what we say to these atheists. Do you really think Allah create would just create something for a fun? Is that what you think of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala? لا. ولذلك Allah says also another ayah, أَيَحْسَبُ الْإِنسَانُ أَنْ يُتْرَكَ سُدَى Does the create does the human actually think that he would be left aimlessly without a purpose behind why he was brought to this world? لا. So Allah tabarak wa ta'ala's actions is all based on hikam. 
and wisdom. Naam. ونشهد أن الله ينزل في الدجا كما قاله المبع كما قاله المبعوث بالحق أحمد. We bear witness that Allah descends in the darkness, as said by the one sent with the truth, Ahmed. The author says, "Rahimahullah, wa nashhadu." The word "wa nashhadu" means what? Nuqirru wa nu'minu. We testify, we affirm with unwavering conviction, and Allah yanzilu fi duja. Duja means zulma, darkness. And what he means by this is ithbatu nuzulullah. Affirming that Allah descends subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this takes place what? في الثلث الليل الأخير In the last third of the night. كما قاله المبعوث The way he had said it. Who said it? المبعوث The one who was sent. بالحق With truth he was sent. أحمد نبي الله محمد So the author is trying to say that this is exactly what our Prophet told us. And this is the hadith. In which its narrations have reached Haddu Tawatur, multitude narration from the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam, Yanzilu Rabbuna, our Lord descends, the Prophet said. Kulla Laylatin ila Sama'i Dunya, and he descends to the what? The Sama'u Dunya. Hina Yabqa Thuluthu Layl Akhir, when the last turn of night remains. Fayakulu Allah then says, Man Yaduni if Astajiba Lahu, who's going to ask of me? I'm ask from me. And beg me for astajib Allah, I will give him what he asks for. May yasaluni, who's going to ask me for I give him what he asks for. May yastaghfiruni, who's going to ask me for forgiveness. For Allah, I will forgive him. And Imam al Bukhari narrated in Sahih. And then what we're trying to say is that, or the author is trying to say here is, Fanuzulu, descending, haqqun thabitu lillah. It's a right of Allah that we have to affirm. And the Salaf, or the pious predecessors, unanimously agreed. That Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he descends. It's an action which he does. But how does he do it? A way that befits his majesty. And we don't know that how. We have no knowledge of it. But what we say is, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ There's nothing like him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's nothing like him in his that, in his essence. And there's nothing like him in his characteristics. And there are nothing like him in his actions. Three of those things, nothing is like him. فِي ذَاتِهِ وصفاته وأفعاله سبحانه وتعالى. Are you with me, brothers? If somebody comes up to you today and says to you, كيف ينزل ربنا إلى السماء الدنيا? How does our Lord descend down to the dunya? Respond by saying, كيف هو? How is he first? If the person then says to you, لا أعلم كيف يتداته. I don't know how Allah's essence is. Then what you say to them is, in response. We also don't know how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he descends. Because a characteristics, sorry, knowing the how of a characteristics necessitates knowing the one in which the characteristics is coming from first. The qaida is al ilmu bi kayfiyati sifati yastalzimu al ilma bi kayfiyati al mawsufi. Having knowledge of the characteristics, first of all, entails that I have knowledge of the one whose the characteristics is coming from. So because we don't know that, we say, Allahu A'lam, Allah knows. But do we deny the characteristics? No, we don't deny the characteristics. Pay attention to this. Are you there? There are three things here. There is ithbat, there is tahrif, and there is tashbih. Those three you have to remember. This matter is all easy, simple. When it comes to the matter of verbal asma wa sifat, all you need to remember is three things. Ithbat, tahrif, are you with me? And there's tashbih. Ithbat meaning affirmation. We Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah, we took affirmation. Tahrif is what the Ahlul Bid'ah have taken. And tashbih. A group of them are muharrifun, they are mu'attila, they distorted the characteristics of Allah. Distortion in terms of its wording sometimes and also distortion in its meaning sometimes. Are you with me? And the next one, the other group are the Mushabbiha. The Mushabbiha, what they've done is that they've affirmed a half Allah, which is what? 
is not part under itibat. ولذلك أهل السنة والجماعة they mention Sheikh Al-Sam Taymiyyah mentions this in many of his books. He says that we have taken al itibat you guys take the rest, which is taharif and tashbih. So a muthbit, a person who affirms, has not fallen into tashbih. This is the problem that comes with these people. And the one who negates also hasn't fallen into taharif, as long as the affirmation and the negation are both taken from the textual evidence. And that is why Imam al-Bukhari's teacher, Hamad, Nu'aym ibn Hamad al-Khuzai, he says, Man shabbaha Allahu bimakhluq, Anyone who makes the creation equal to Allah, and makes Allah's characteristics equal to the creation's characteristics, فَقَدْ كَفَرَ He's a kafir. Are you with me? And he then goes on to say, Anyone who affirms for Allah that which he affirmed for himself has not fallen into tashbih, because what Allah affirmed for himself is not tashbih. Naam, Sam. وَنَشْهَدُ أَنَّ اللَّهَ أَرْسَلَ رُسْلَهُ بِآيَاتِهِ بِآيَاتِهِ لِلْخَلْقِ تَهْدِي وَتُرْشِدُ And we bear witness that Allah sent His messengers with revelation to all creation to guide and direct. The author then says again, وَنَشْهَدُ So what does, what does the word نَشْهَدُ mean? أَيْ وَنُقِرُّ وَنُؤْمِنُ We believe with unwavering conviction. أَنَّ اللَّهَ أَرْسَلَ رُسْلَهُ That Allah sent his messengers Allah sent his messengers and when Allah sent his messengers he sent them with what rusulan mubashirina wa mundirina li alla yakuna lin nas ala Allah hujjatun ba'da ar-rusul Allah tells us in that verse that he sent the messengers with three purposes pay attention to this are you with me brothers Allah says rusulan mubashirina wa mundirin Allah sent messengers for what to give glad tidings. وَمُنْذِرِينَ to warn. Are you there? And the third one is لِأَلَّا يَكُونَ لِلنَّاسِ عَلَى اللَّهِ حُجَّةٌ بَعْدَ الرُّسُولِ That there is no proof for the people the day of judgment to say, oh, a messenger didn't come to us. To strip that argument away from them. To get rid of that argument that they're going to bring if they get into the hellfire. Oh, Allah, I didn't know. No messenger came and told us this. That's why Allah says in another ayah, وَإِن مِّنْ أُمَّةٍ إِلَّا خَلَى فِيهَا نَذِيرٍ There is not a nation except the messenger was sent to them. This is something Allah done for every one of them. So, أَنَّ اللَّهَ أَرْسَلَ رُسْلَهُ Allah sent His messengers. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when a da'i comes, he has to be of those three. He has to keep that in mind. He has to be a mubashir. Keep glad tidings to the people. And he also has to warn the people has to be a nadir, a wuna. And he has to know that this is establishing proof against the people. So the people don't have an argument the day of judgment to say that a messenger didn't come to us. Allah sent his messengers with his signs. The word ayah in the Arabic language, it means al-alamatu zahira an apparent sign. Any apparent sign is known as an alama. But when we look at the nusus al wahyain when we look at the textual evidences, the kitab and the, and the sunnah, what we find is that the word ayat is used for two things. Ayat, which is known as ayat matluwa, the recited verses, which are the Qur'an, ayat of the Qur'an. And the second one, which is ayat, which are mushahada. Ayat, which are the day, the night. In other wordings, some scholars, they call it ayat, which are kawniya, universal signs. And al ayat, which are shar'iya, which is legislational signs. Those are two signs in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent messengers with. Are you with me? Our messenger, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The sign in which he came with That is the strongest Is ayat which are Shari'ah, the Quran Who are the prophets? Their signs which they dominated And they 
came to prove their people of their prophecy was signs which were universal signs. Our messenger came with universal signs like the splitting of the moon. But he alayhi salatu was salam, the biggest sign in which he came with is the Quran. As the poet said, جَاءَ النَّبِيُّونَ بِالْآيَاتِ فَانْصَرَمَتْ وَجِئْتَنَا بِحَكِيمٍ غَيْرَ مُنْصَرِمِ آيَاتُ كُلَّ مَا طَالَ الْمَدَى جُدَدُ يُبَيِّنُهُنَّ جَمَالُ الْعِتْقِ وَالْقِدَمِ Every prophet he came with what? Ayat. Are you with me? But every prophet when he died, that sign died with him. Whereas our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ayatuhu, he sign that he came with, as time goes on, as time goes, as time goes on, it actually starts to, the Quran, the more time goes on, the more that it becomes more powerful. And it's like, subhanallah. It brings out more of the waqa and the reality that it was talking about. It shines and it glows even more as time goes on. Its beauty becomes clear to the people as time goes on. Every year we pray taraweeh and we listen to the reciters. When you hear the Quran being recited and read, you just think, subhanallah, I have never, ever, ever heard something like this. Wallahi, I finished the Quran many times. Every single time I finish, I'm like, this safha, this page, this ayah, subhanallah, this surah, this, the, this, this. I finished it already. And then I go on over again. And again, every time you read it, it doesn't wear out like clothing. The ajaib la yanqati'u ajaibu. Its amazement does not come to an end. And the gems and the jewels that are in it. When you look at the Quran. Reading it, it doesn't. Whereas the previous prophets, as I said to you, they used to come with ayat which are mushahada, signs of what can be seen. The reason scholars mention is that the reason why the Quran was an ayah given to the prophet is that when he dies, because there's no prophet going to come after him, the people who come after him, the ulama, ahlul ilm, they have a sign to still show to the people. That this is the Prophet, this is this is a sign of Nabiullah Muhammad's what? Prophecy. Believe it. Read this Quran. Ponder on it. You'll see. Sometimes prophets would ask their people to come with signs and say, okay, bring us a sign, and they will believe you. And when the sign came, they disbelieved, and Allah had the sunan. It doesn't change. And from the Sunnah of Allah was that whenever he brought a nation, an ayat which is mushahada, a sign that was seen, if they didn't believe straight after that, he will punish them. You got what you wanted. And even as we said this morning, Banu Israel came to the Prophet ﷺ and they said to the Prophet ﷺ, They came to the Prophet and they said, Ya Muhammad, you want us to believe you? Well, you have to know one thing. We've taken a covenant, a promise with Allah. What is it that you took Allah promise with? The promise that we took with Allah wa ta'ala, is that we don't believe in any prophet. This is our promise with Allah. This is something we've ready, something that happens for us. That we don't ever believe in a prophet until we do a qurban. We slaughter a, meat, a ram and we place it in the open and a nar comes from the sky and it takes that ram unless we see that take place we're not going to believe. That was the proof and argument that they put forward. Then the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah informed him. Because what they're looking for here is ayah, mushahada. Allah said, Allah told him subhanahu wa ta'ala to respond back to them. And to say to them, قُلْ قَدْ جَاءَتْكُمْ رُسُلٌ مِّنْ قَبْلِي Messengers have come before me. Prophets came before me. بِالَّذِي قُلْتُمْ That which you guys have claimed right now. بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَبِالَّذِي قُلْتُمْ They came with clear cut evidences and they also came with what you, have, what you guys have requested for. فَلِمَا قَتَلْتُمُونَ Why did you kill them then? Why did you kill those prophets? Which you guys are saying, you, this, is what, this, is a, this is the thing that makes you guys believe a man is a prophet. But other prophets did do that for you, based on your own statement. But you never believed them, you killed them. So this shows that a lot of the times... And this is the truth. 
Anyone who says to you, if only you do this for me, I will believe you. A lot of the times they won't. And that's what Sheikh al-Albani, rahimahullah, he tanabbah li hadha. He pondered on this issue very well and he said something very powerful. He said that the person who one evidence is not enough for him, a thousand won't be enough for him. Anyone, if you give them one evidence, that's enough. One evidence, if I give to you, that should be enough for you. But if you're asking for big things and you're asking for great things, it really just shows that you were never planning to get believe. I'll give you a funny story. There was a man who used to live in a village, a town. I pro probably mentioned this story a lot of times. He lived in a town in the city or village, whatever. And basically, all his neighborhood people used to get robbed. They used to, they used to get robbed and they would lose their house, property and stuff. So there was a thief in the, in the village. He would take, he would go to one house after the other house, after the other. And he would rob. And the people of the village were very scared. They were very scared of him. So what happens in the morning when people wake up, they find that this person got robbed. And it would be a, a laughing stock. Like, how can you do that to you? Is that how weak you are? This man, on the other hand, he used to boast and say to the people, watch, he can't come to my house. I'll deal with him. So he used to put that out. If only he comes to my house, I will what? I will make sure he, he learns a lesson. So what happened was, the thief, being the thief he was, one house after the other, it was this man's turn now. So the one who used to boast and brag, the thief came into his house. And the rest of the people that the thief used to rob, he used to rob them whilst they were asleep. But this individual got robbed whilst he was alive. Whilst he was awake, sorry. While he was uh, awake, he got robbed. And it was funny because not only the house got robbed, but what he was wearing was taken from him. So in the morning, the people heard the story. They confronted him and they said to him, hey, listen. We all got robbed whilst we were asleep. We weren't aware of it. You got robbed whilst you were awake. And what you were wearing was taken from you. And he said, no, be quiet, brothers and sisters. He said, be quiet. I was only waiting for him to touch my boxes. If only he touched my boxes, I would have made sure he learned a lesson. That's what he said. So some people's nature is like that. Any circumstance that they're put in, in any situation that they're in, they've always got something to fall back to. They all say, this is the only thing I want evidence from you. Brother, listen, I will take it from you now. I will. Hey, just bring me this. If I do bring it, would you take it? Ha, I will. When you do bring that, he'll say, no, 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 no. Are you with me, brothers? So what you need to understand as an individual is that if the person wasn't taking from you those 50 evidences that you brought for them, don't really believe and think to yourself on any grounds that he's going to take what? This one evidence. Is he going to is he going to deny 50 and take one from you that he's claiming? Do you believe that? La. That's what Allah said to the Prophet wa ma ala rasul illa al mubin. Have you guys ever heard Allah telling the Prophet it's upon you to place the guidance in the people's hearts? Have you ever heard that? Have you ever seen that in the Quran or the Sunnah? That's not his job. وَمَا عَلَى الرَّسُولِ إِلَّا الْبَلَاغُ الْمُبِينَ Rather Allah Taala even rebuked the Prophet for trying to do that. Allah said to them لَسْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمُسَيْطِرِ إِنَّمَا عَلَيْكَ الْبَلَاغُ Allah said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam تُكْرِهُ النَّاسِ are you burdening and forcing the people into believing? That's not your job. Your job, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, is balagh, convey the message clearly. Say as it is. Whether they accept it or not. He tried that with his own uncle Abu Talib. Allah said, إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتِ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهِ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءَ You can guide and put forward your arguments and your proofs Leave Allah Taala to place it in the people's hearts or not. But like some people, they make it their effort to make sure that the people are guided, and because of that, people lose motivation of da'wah. That's the problem that why they lose motivation, because they place their efforts on what outcome comes from it, and that's not your job. The outcome is not your job. Your job, your effort, your your job is what. Even if it's one person that you guided, that's what Allah said to the, uh, the Prophet said to Ali ibn Abi Talib. 
لأن يهدي الله بك رجل واحد خير لك من حمر النعم فالله تقال one person on your hand is better for you than a red camel so don't be <coughs> the author then here he says what does he say ونشهد أن الله أرسل رسله بآياته للخلق why did Allah send out this Quran why did he send these ayat which are some of them which is ayat which are matluwa and some are which are ayat which are I'm a, ayat matluwa and ayat which are mushahada are you with me تهدي وترشده Allah said that why لألا يكون للناس على الله حجة بعد الرسول prophets have come with these to the creation so there's no proof for you anymore this is basically إقامة للحجة the proof to be established on you وإزالة وإزالة and it is also to remove from you للمعذرة any excuses that you might put forward all of that is تهدي تقايد وترشده of course this guidance here is دلالة الهداية والإرشاد not هداية التوفيق it's هداية الدلالة والإرشاد it is the hidayah of showing the path and making sure that the person knows one way from the other. It's the one Allah negated from the Prophet. Allah is the one Allah affirmed for him, sorry. Hidayatu Dalalat wal Irshad is the one Allah affirmed for the Prophet, which is وكذلك أوحينا إليك روحا من من أمرنا ما كنت تدري ما الكتاب ولا الإيمان ولكن جعلناه نورا نهدي به من نشاء من عبادنا وإنك لا تهدي إلى صراط المستقيم إنك لا تهدي محمد يقاد. But the verses which Allah سبحانه وتعالى he negates from the messenger عليه الصلاة والسلام guidance such as قوله تعالى وإنك لا وإنك لا تهدي من أحببت أما إنك لا تهدي من أحببت ولكن الله يهدي من يشاء in سورة قصص that is basically um, Hidayah to tawfiq, placing the guidance in the people's hearts. That one you can't do. But the guidance you can do is to show the path. Showing the path, yes, ma'am. As for placing the guidance in the people's hearts, that is something you can't do, nor anyone else other than you. Who is the one who does that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, Allah negated from him by saying to him, Laysa alayka hudahum. It is not upon you their guiding. Muhammad, guiding them is not upon you. In other words, placing the guidance in the people's hearts is not upon you. It is not your job. Your job is to show the path. Anyone who then wants, Allah says, فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ إِنَّا أَعْتَدْنَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ نَارًا أَحَاطَ بِهِمْ صُرَادِقُهَا The one who wants to believe, believe. The one who wants to disbelieve, disbelieve. هذا. يا إخوة, this religion doesn't need anyone. لا لي ولا, ولا لغيري. It doesn't need me, nor does it need you. As I said before, you're the one who needs to save his flesh and his bones from the hellfire. 